Hey, welcome to this video tutorial. This is Nick from Income Digs. We're gonna dive into some really cool integrations here. We're gonna talk about QuickBooks and managing your rental properties and your accounts receivable, but we're gonna also tie that into an operational system with Podio. So it's gonna be really cool, kind of advanced, but super useful. And I'm gonna be doing everything with Zapier. So the connection, the integration is all gonna be done with Zapier, which means there's no coding or API connections that you need to do yourself. It's all gonna be done with Zapier, the third party. Okay, so most of you who follow me know that I use Podio quite a bit. On the property management side, I have a template that's ready to go. It's more of an operational template where you can manage you know, how many units do you have, what's rented, what's not, maintenance requests coming in. The piece that's missing from that is accounting, but I do my accounting with QuickBooks. And what this integration does is it brings both things into one place, all right? So it's super powerful. It's gonna open up some really new, do uh, some exciting doors for what we can do uh, with the two different systems. All right, so diving in here, we have invoices that are open for um, my business here in QuickBooks. I'm gonna delete this one. This was the test one that I did. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I can, within Podio, create an invoice and then have QuickBooks create that invoice. And I can do all the cool stuff that QuickBooks does from an accounting standpoint while still maintaining a one view on Podio. All right, so on Podio, if I look at my property management workspace, I'm just gonna go to the workspace homepage for a second, and I'll see a bunch of, um, a bunch of tiles and a bunch of stuff that I'm managing. I have this invoices app, okay? And the idea behind this invoices app, it's a really simple one, is you would just manage some really easy information on your invoices. So it's a it's an easy app to create. You would just have the date, the renter, the unit, the amount, and then some statuses as well. You would never within Podio manage your accounting books. You know, you would never look to generate a balance sheet, an income statement, any of that. That is done in QuickBooks or some other accounting software. But you might want to know what renters haven't paid you and how much is outstanding. And we can do some of that with this integration. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Now we're gonna use Zapier. So if you've used Zapier before, you're probably familiar, but basically what it is, is a way for us to connect uh, many different apps. So, so many that are uh, out there that people use. So QuickBooks, Copper, Asana, um, all that stuff is available. Slack, of course, to connect with Zapier. Now QuickBooks Online is one as well. It is a premium app, which means that it, um, you have to have at least the starter plan, okay? You can't do it on the free plan, but it's only like 20 bucks a month. All right, so we're gonna create this Zap. So I'm gonna click create Zap. Now, any kind of Zap, that's an integration, really. That's all that means, all right? So I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna choose an app to trigger. Now I'm gonna trigger out a Podio. I will tell you that we can do this the other way, and you might want to. We'll talk about the pros and cons of that. But for now, I'm gonna create uh, this action out of Podio, and this will be, you know, what is the trigger? It's gonna be a new action for me. So basically what I've done in my invoices app, if I set it up that I have this trigger here, QuickBooks status, that when I move to push to QBO, that's when I want to create the invoice in QuickBooks. You could do it on the creation of an invoice. I like to have some kind of status update. Okay, so new action. Then you're going to connect your Podio account. I have a bunch here because I have a bunch of my clients in here. Save and continue. And then you're gonna set up kind of the template. So what organization? what workspace, so property management, what application, it's gonna be the invoices app. What field are we looking for? So this will be the uh, QBO status, okay? And it's when, what type of action? It's when that item is updated. Okay, now look at, you can do it on several different types of actions. I'm gonna do item update. And what I'm gonna do is click continue. And then I'm gonna say pull in samples, all right? And it's gonna start looking within Podio for some samples. And I'm gonna give it one by changing this to push to QBO, kind of testing this. All right, it should hopefully find it. I want it to find that sample and then I'm gonna work with that sample throughout the rest of the Zap setup, okay? If it's not finding it right away, you can kind of redo the status change, which I'll probably do. Kind of bounce it around a little bit to hopefully allow Zapier to find my sample. I definitely suggest getting a sample in there because um, 
you're going to be able to tell whether it's not it, whether it's working or not. And it's not seeming to find it. So we'll do it one more time. All right, so there we got some samples in there. Now, it probably pulled in two, one where it was in not in QBO, and one where it is in push to QBO. So I'm gonna check the samples to see what the status is. All right, um, I'm just gonna search, control find QBO. Push to QBO, that's exactly what I want, so I'm gonna use that sample. All right, I'm gonna use action A, click continue. Okay, so now I wanna add a step. Now the next step is really to create the invoice in QuickBooks. However, we must do a filter first. We need to know that it's not just when that status changes to anything, it's when its status changes to push to QBO. All right, so this action step is actually, it's gonna be a helper step called filter. So I'm gonna filter and I'm going to say that I only want the zap to continue if that QBO status equals push to QBO. All right, so if this field, the text exactly matches, and then just type push to QBO. And so now I click test and continue, it's going to look and say, would my zap have continued? Yes, cool, great. So now I know my filter is working. Now let's add a step for QuickBooks. Now the next step I wanna do, I wanna add an invoice, okay? So I'm gonna go to QuickBooks Online, and I'm going to say create an invoice. Save and continue. Now. I'm going to need a customer. And you'll see that as we start setting up this template, it's going to ask me, who is the customer? Well, I kind of need to search for that because I don't, I'm not, I'm not gonna give it just a static name. I need to search for that from my previous step. So I can click this to add a search step. And what it does is it adds a search step for find a customer. Now you could have done this on your own. Just hit the plus button, action step, QuickBooks Online, and you can do Find Customer. Okay, I only need one of those though, so I'm gonna get rid of that one. So here's the next step, find a customer in QuickBooks Online, find a customer, continue, make sure we have the right QuickBooks Online set up, and then here are my options. So what field should we search? I like to search on the name field, you can search on the email. What's neat about this, is, and we can open up some options here, we can actually create customers before we do any invoicing, from Podio, when a renter becomes a, an actual tenant, we sign a lease, we can automatically create the customer and make sure that the names match. If the names don't match, we can get into some issues. So that's something that you'll wanna be aware of. I'm gonna do it based on name. Email is also a good one uh, to do it off. And so, okay, I wanna look at the name field in QuickBooks and what am I searching? I'm gonna be searching from within Podio Come on, just a little bit slow at the moment. And I'm just gonna give that a second. I'm also gonna click this, create QuickBooks customer if one doesn't exist yet. Okay, now let me see if I search. Okay, there we go, so search value. And then you click within Podio and you can search for, it's gonna really be, for me I use multiple contacts can be a renter, so it's gonna be a joint name field. So I'm actually gonna start typing joint and my joint full name field is gonna come in there, all right? Now, if that one does not exist in QuickBooks, we wanted to create a new one. Again, my full name I'm gonna do is joint full name, okay? And the email I'm gonna do is joint email, so, okay? And again, the way that I do that is I have multiple people. Think about husband and wife or a few friends that are renting from you. I, I have a calculation in Podio that combines their name, combines their email into one. All right, so that looks good. So now I've searched for my customer and I can use that in my next one. I'm just gonna fetch and continue to make sure it found something, okay. So now I can create this invoice and basically what it's doing is it pre-populates the customer that we found in step three. All right. So that should work great. And actually I'm gonna just delete this and show you 
um, how you would do this if that didn't show up there, you're going to find the customer ID right there. That's all it is. Okay, email, I'm going to leave it blank because it's going to pull the customer's email. Okay. Um, send later, let's say, let's say no on that. Okay, you can fill in all this stuff, but you don't need to. Uh, invoice date, I'm going to grab that from Podio. So here is Podio. And I'm just going to type date. Hopefully it's going to give me the dates. Good. Due date, I'm going to leave blank. I'm going to actually put terms as uh, due on receipt. Okay. Invoice number, I'm going to leave this blank too. I want QuickBooks to generate one for me. And I'm going to show you a cool last step where we're going to feed that back into Podium. Then we do have line item support for our invoice. I'm just going to show you one where um, this is going to be rental income. Okay. So you could do a search step, but... Um, and we probably should set that up. Basically, the way you would do it is you would have the product or service feed this invoice here, and then you can use that to feed into here. For now, I'm just going to do it as sales, just nice and easy. The description I'm going to do is monthly rent. Okay. I can do a quantity rate. The amount is going to be... Now, again, I, I'm going to search. Podio is kind of weird with, like, they have so many fields available. It kind of takes a while to search. I know that my invoice sample is 1450, so I'm just going to search based on that. And there it is, right? Tax, I'll leave blank. Class, I'll leave blank for now. Uh, accept payments via bank. Sure, I always do that. I never accept credit card payments by default. All right, and then you can fill in other fields if you want to. Well, let's just continue. All right, so what should happen, you should be able to test this and create that invoice in QuickBooks Online. So I'm going to click that. All right, so did it create an invoice in QuickBooks Online? Let's see. It looks like it did right here, okay? So here's the invoice that was just created from Podio. It pulled in all the information I wanted it to. Jack doesn't have an email, that's why I didn't give you one. All right, so this looks really good. It created, everything looks like it's working. So I'm pretty much done. I've created you know, the invoice in QuickBooks, but one last step that I think is potentially the most important is coming back to Podio and updating this item. And what I mean there is I've pushed it to QBO and I go into QuickBooks and I can tell that it got created. But you're not gonna to wanna to do that every time, right? So we might want to come back to Podio and put in an invoice number so that we know that this thing was created correctly. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do. So last step within the same app, okay? Add one more step within Podio Okay, so I'm going to update item. It's going to be the same organization. It's going to be the same workspace. And the same application invoices. All right, what item should we update? It's just going to be the same one we worked on last time. So you're just gonna do custom value and then it's gonna say, okay, which one? And you're going to say, you're gonna start typing item ID and that's what it's gonna be. Now, if you're confused as to what it is, like, is this the right one? This is why having a good sample is important. Go ahead and click this, but then to just check, like, is that correct? Go to the item that you know is the one you wanna update. Go to developer info and check the item ID and that should match and it, it is in this case. So we know we're finding the right one. That's great. Now an annoying thing about this is I have required fields in Podio and Zapier is making me update them, which is a little bit silly in my opinion because I don't wanna change those at all. I know they're required, but I don't wanna change them. So I kinda have to go into this and, and repopulate. Now it's not gonna actually change anything. It's just gonna stay the same. Now renter, that's a relationship field, okay? So it's right here. Now, another good practice, let's go into the renter and let's grab his um, item ID, copy that. And then when we go here, we're gonna do a custom value. Again, this is annoying. You might be thinking like, can I just keep it the same? I didn't change anything. I completely agree with you. Um, and search that. And then here it is. So fields relationship related item ID, great. I got it. Unit, same thing. All right, now I'm doing this to be thorough. Um, you might be able to know that you got the right one without doing this, but I'm just 
making sure that this app is going to be created the right way. So unit, I'm going to again uh, use a custom value from the first one. I'm going to search for that fields relationship related units value item ID and that's it. Okay, the amount is going to be the same um, amount and again I'm going to search 1450. Okay, here we go. QuickBooks status. Now I want to say that we are in QuickBooks. We're all set. We're all done. Payment status will remain as unpaid. The QuickBooks invoice number, really important. We're going to grab from the created invoice, and it's actually called doc ID, I believe, or doc number. All right, so again, the annoying thing with Podio is it gives you all those fields. Uh, I can just scroll down. QuickBooks is a lot easier. So scroll down and it looks like your doc number, 1006. All right, click continue. And then I'll test this step. And the magic here, what I would like to have happen is when this whole thing works successfully, Podio should be, my invoice should be moved to in QuickBooks and my invoice number is updated. And that's exactly what happened. So that's what I want, all right? Um, this whole thing is now connected. And what is really important about this and why I feed back this QuickBooks invoice number is because now we can do a whole slew of other things, meaning I can, when a payment comes in, come to this invoice and update it as paid. I can do a bunch of searching based off of that number. So it's super cool, super powerful. All right, so um, hopefully you can see this opens doors to all sorts of different things we can do. We can create products and services in QuickBooks. We can create customers in QuickBooks. We can reflect payments back to Podio. And ultimately, like, what would that help us do? I can create a, um, a little report. Like, I can grab my unpaid and go to create a report, and I can calculate the amount of unpaid, and I can say unpaid invoices. And I can pull this up to my workspace homepage so that every day when I come in, I can see what is outstanding and what do I need to work on getting. If I click into this, it'll drill down to those tenants that are unpaid. All right. Super powerful stuff. So uh, this is new. This is kind of advanced. We're going to be doing a lot more of this. I'm going to be showing you a lot more applications of this. Because it is new and we haven't really worked with Zapier before, I'm interested to hear your questions and comments. What do you want to learn? What have you tried that hasn't worked? And hopefully I can help you out. We're going to be doing this with document signature with PandaDoc. Really exciting. We're going to be doing more with QuickBooks. And uh, also, also super excited. Uh, this is not going to be on this video, but we are going to be talking about a tenant portal within property management. So um, really my goal is to be able to allow you to manage your entire business, your property management business from Podio, from QuickBooks, PandaDoc, all together in one consistent place. All right, so uh, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. And of course, please, please, please uh, leave me comments, questions. Let me know how I can help you out. All right, thanks.